Hello everyone, welcome to this next lecture on design of water distribution system. Now in this video, we are going to design a water distribution network, but we will be using values of flow which are very low and therefore we will be using pipe sizes which are commonly used for very small flows. So this may be in contradiction with what the codal values have to say but since we are just starting the designing journey therefore these values will be sufficient to aid our process of learning in the upcoming videos we will learn more about what the codes says so bear with me now till now we have completed nearly 23 to 25 lectures on this series and you can watch all those lectures uh, by going to this playlist section and then selecting this complete course here you can access all the lectures and make sure that you are a member before accessing it. Now today we are into the third module and we have already completed two modules. Now in multiple YouTube videos or any YouTube video that is there on design of water distribution system using any software. The basic problem that I found while I was starting to learn this thing is that without telling much of a background they simply start designing okay so those nodes those pipes look looks like very naive and alien to me but today i am trying to solve those problems which i had faced while i was learning all these things now all these exercises will be done in epanet but i can assure you that once you learn design with the underlying principles then you can design it in any software all you need to know in a new software such as water gems or any other related software is how to click those buttons that's it so your basic aim in this lecture is designing the networks once you have learned that you can either design it in excel you can design it using any software without much of a training of that particular environment okay and if you don't believe me, you will believe me by the end of this video. So let's start. So today we are going to design the water distribution system uh, for this place. Seems to be a small area, but we are not concerned about that. So the basic scheme is that there is a tank for this entire area and the water is being supplied through underground pipes that have been laid uh, below this roads and there are various connections uh, which we will be referring to as nodes while designing so some of these uh, nodes will have some house connections some of them will have some intersections right so this is what this is a practical thing that we are watching on our screen now we will try to slowly animate it and then we will put it through a line diagram in epanet so this diagram which is a real one when we put it in various animated formats it will look something like this now let's remove all those roads because we know that the pipelines have been laid below this road so we will we would like to see the actual pipelines that are there so if we remove all the roads this is how it will look now everything here is located on a different elevation but uh, since the animation is two dimensional we can see everything at the same level but you can interpret that this is not the actual reality. So I will be providing you with the elevation values and the base demands for the places which actually have a demand. <coughs> so now we will try to convert all these remove all these houses and convert them into nodes and we will also try to convert the intersections of various pipelines or roads as nodes because this is the requirement when we design anything and we will leave the tank as it is so once we convert it into a nodal system this is how it will look so we have multiple pipelines multiple nodes and then we have a distribution system so this that was a small area for which we need to design the distribution system so maybe this area is small but if we are able to do everything 
in the prescribed limits then will boost our confidence as a designer because we will be able to complete our first design in a comprehensive manner now uh, some more details that i am adding to this network and that is the related elevation details so you can see that the tank is at the highest elevation among the lot that is 1000 meters and then the subsequent nodes have some decreasing elevations 980 meter 960 meter 970 meter and then the minimum elevation that we can see in this network is 800 meters which is at the top one topmost network and then many of these have some demands for example we can see a demand here so basically from what we have learned till now this is a dead end system that is there are no loops we have multiple dead ends one is this one two three four five and six so all the dead ends have some demands so here the demand is two liters per second you can convert it in million liters of per day or any other relevant unit that you may be using in your country but for the sake of this tutorial we will be converting it into liters per second so this is the brief introduction of the network now we will move to the next section uh, okay before that i would like to tell you that the pipe that we are going to use is hdpe right so that is the plastic pipe and uh, the reason why i told you is because uh, while we will be designing it with the Hazen Williams formula, the value of C that will be there will be related to the HDP that is 140, right? Moving forward, so at the end of every design, what should happen? That the water should flow from the reservoir to all the related nodes in adequate pressure and velocity in the range of what has been defined by the codes okay so let's start now i have opened apernet now th these are the various toolboxes that are there in this system but uh, we need not to describe each and every tool because that will make the lecture very boring rather we will we have now an idea that what we are going to design and that's why i'm showing you this diagram on the right side of the screen so this is the thing that we are going to design now and how to do that we will start so first uh, we will do some basic settings for epanet because any software that you open whether it's water gems or epanet the first thing that we need to do is set the units in which we are working for because these softwares are designed uh, for working in multiple countries and every countries have their own system of units for example here in india we use the system of international units that is the si system somewhere it may be the cgs system the mks system right so you need to set up the units that you are going to use it for this lecture so we will do that and then we will also set the environment that uh, the equation that we are using for our calculation and that will be the hagen williams so let's do that so we will first go to the option called as uh, view and uh, then we will select the options now here you can see a variety of options that is node link labels notation symbols flow arrows and backgrounds so in case you want to change any of the things from this option you can do that for now we will see each and every option and if there are any changes required we will make the respective change so nodes is okay then links i think it's okay labels are also okay notation we can tick uh, the display node and display link ids or we can just use the values symbols is okay flow and background everything is okay right so we have set our basic setup all right what we can do is that we can change this white background to a kind of yellowish one okay okay now we will go to the unit section and there we will cho choose the flow units as liters per second and then we can also choose the headless formula from the various given options for this purpose we are keeping it to his and williams only now the basic setup has been done so we 
start drawing the elements so first we will draw a tank right so this is the option that is used for tank you can see we have selected the, that option and we draw a tank here the defining of the properties and all of this tank we will do later first let's draw the network now we will draw the various nodes as you can see on the diagram in the right that there are various nodes which have been shown by the circles uh, so these nodes we try to draw and then we will connect all these nodes with some pipelines or the required elements so let's draw it all you have to do is just select the node option and right click the number of times you want to draw a node at the required place i think we have completed drawing the nodes or do we know it more no i think that's it right now we will try to make the pipelines as we have seen in the animation earlier and the diagram that is there in front of us so to draw the pipeline we choose the pipe option that is highlighted on the top and then we join nodes using a single click right so we'll try to join every node So now that you have understood the background and the rationale behind drawing all these things because this is the actual site that we are trying to let's say replicate on this software Sometimes we may end up drawing some unintentional nodes or pipelines. So we can also delete them. Let me first draw it, then I will try to explain you how can we delete elements. Right, so the network is complete, it seems. Now here we draw additional node. Okay. Now to delete any link or node, you can select it and then you can click on the right button and select delete option. So that will delete the unintentional or the things which have been built by mistake sometimes what may happen is you may unintentionally zoom to a level uh, which might not show the complete picture or sometimes it is actually required to see a zoomed view of a certain section of the diagram so zooming you all know you can scroll up from your mouse to zoom but sometimes when you zoom out na, the things do not get into the frame where we actually started from so you can click on this button and then it will zoom to the current extents just see this happening here right so you can see we have came to the original place Now we will try to enter the data of elevation for each and every section of this network. So let's do that. But before we do that, I will try to give you a small commentary on what we have actually done till now. So there is a system that we are going to draw or at times when you are working for a used project, there will be system which has actually working and we have to simulate that. So we, there is a water distribution network that we need to draw on any software water gems Ebanet. so we can first of all draw it manually by the way that we have drawn just now 
then there are certain other ways by which we can draw it for example one of such ways is using a background file so in ipanet the concept of background file is a alien feature but in water gems and all what you can do is the survey data which you have received in dxf format or any other relevant format you can use it as a background and then you will be shown up with all the nodes and pipelines so you can just draw the elements wherever it is required then there is also a model builder which will actually identify all the nodes and pipelines and draw it automatically but it is very erroneous means it will give a lot of error so it is always advised to draw networks manually unless you are very much advanced and have the idea of that automated tool okay so in any other network what will happen is uh, we will be drawing the network on the background layer that is there okay so in water gems also you can do the same i am showing you the video um, now if you want to know how it is done in water gems i am telling you about a video which you can watch on youtube and you will understand each and everything that i have told right now if you just watch that video although the language and the accent use has been a very difficult one especially for beginners but if you if you watch this video you will understand the exact thing what i am telling you right now so in water gems also first thing that you will need to do is you will first set up your units and then you can also impose the background file and draw the networks and the various elements on that so now we will put the various details about this network and let's first start with the elevation again in water gems or any other software also you have to do the same thing you have to double click on any element which you want to edit or which you want to add the detail for and then put the required value so, so the process there also will be the same and that has been illustrated in the video which i have already shown you few moments back so let's do it here now so just double click on anything so first we start from the tank and then you can change the elevation now you might be seeing something on the x or y coordinate you don't need to be worried about that then we move on to the junctions i am simply copying the values that we can see in the diagram in the right side Now we have drawn all the networks. Uh, so let's us see the values of the various inputs that we have done in a consolidated format. So to do that, you can go to the tables option. 
and then you can just select the nodes because we now want to see the nodes data so you can see that the elevation data for each junction and tank has been updated now we will try to put the demands on various nodes so let's select all the dead ends and then put the corresponding demands so here the demand is 2 liters per second and then again we put demands on all the dead ends you can have demands on the intermediate nodes also so that will not make any difference on the network as such it will just add the flow to the nodes which are upstream sometimes it may happen that we have a demand for an entire area so we may not know the demand for each and every node in that case so we can use the aerial or linear distribution of demand in such cases if time permits i will try to explain that in another video right so we have calculated the uh, sorry we have did the input for the demand values now now we try to run the model to see if there are any errors as such we have still not input many values but let's just run it for now to see what are the various problems so here it is giving us a warning that negative pressures again if you if you could not again if you could not observe how to run um, the network you can see this energy icon you can just click on that and the network will start running so it has identified that there are negative pressures but we cannot see any pressure as such because the labels are still not on so we will try to switch on the labels uh, so that we can visualize that and you can and to do that you can follow this process you can go to this browser and then from the nodes you can select pressure right so we can see that there is enormous negative pressure and the reason for that being is that we have not yet uh, given the tank details in the complete level So now before we put the tank details uh, first let us understand how a tank works now this is a tank and we can see we have three levels that we need to put the first one is initial level that is what was the starting level of your tank uh, what that what how much water is currently present then comes the minimum level that is what is the minimum level up to which you can allow water to fall right so that is the place where the outlet is there then the third is the maximum level that is what is the level up to which the maximum water can be filled then there is the diameter of the tank right so here these values are given now we will simply put it into the application right so now that we have understood how this tank is working now let's put the relevant levels so first we will uh, enter the initial level and the value of the initial level is 3.2 then the minimum level that is 0 0.3 and then the maximum level which is same as the initial level that is 3.2 and then the diameter is 7.2 meters right so we have done the tank details now we try to run it once again and then see what are the various errors so again it is saying the negative pressures so now we will start putting the data related to the pipe so first we will start with the pipe dia so for that we select the entire network and to do that you can go to the edit option and then press select all then you can go to group edit and then you can select all the pipes 
and the things which we need to replace so we need to replace the diameter with uh, let's say 75 mm So this is this works the same way in water gems so you don't need to worry about that now again uh, even after putting the pipe there it is saying that the negative pressures are there but you can see the magnitude of negative pressures has decreased so this is something that we should learn that pipe dia has some effect to play on the kind of velocity and pressure that we are going to experience in a system and we will learn it through an animation in just the coming few moments now here you can clearly see that whenever the pipe dia is larger the number of molecules passing uh, per unit square area is relatively lesser than what is passing through a pipe of smaller diameter so therefore the velocity will increase as we reduce the pipe diameter what can we say about the head losses so smaller pipes mean larger head losses because there will be more friction from the walls but if the same quantity of water is being passed through a larger pipe then the head losses will be lesser right so now you can conclude from this that if we need to increase the velocity in a pipe what do we need to do with the pipe size and if we need to decrease the head loss in a pipe what do we need to do with the diameter so this is what we will be applying and then let's proceed to the design further so now that you have understood that if there are negative pressures then we obviously need to increase the pipe dia because the discharge in the main system of the pipe is too much right so here we will go to the first link and try to increase the pressure so now before doing that you first note that the pressure here is minus 118.14 meters of h2o so once we increase the pipe dia we will see if there is any change in that or not so let's do that so we will change the pipe dia from currently 75 meters to uh, let's say 100 meters and then we will run it again So again it is showing negative pressures but we can see that the negative pressure has reduced considerably okay so now we will make it to 150 meters of dia and then we will run it I think this will turn positive now and yes it has been turned positive so that is what we require to do so all the trunk mains we will make the diameter as 150 meters run this and then we will see that all these networks in fact the entire network has some positive pressure now right so this is the effect that a diameter has on pipes now we will try to deal with each and every part of the network one by one now you can see that there is a certain uh, diagram that has been in the index side of this map that is uh, pressures are having some different types of color coding now this color coding is very important why because if there is a huge network let's say there are ten thousands of pipes now you cannot go and inspect each and every pipe in a network because that will be too time consuming but you can set some criteria that those pipes filter me those pipes which have a pressure of let's say less than seven meters of head because that is what we generally aim for so we will try to code that as red any pipe which has pressure less than seven meters we will try to code that as red so in the entire network wherever there will be red lights or red pipes highlighting we will have we will know that there is some error right so that is how it is useful so to do this in uh, epanet we can change the color coding like this this is the default color settings of epanet we can change it by by going to view and then legends then we will modify the nodes and here we can set the required pressure and the 
related color coding so let is so let us keep it as 7 meters only then you can give any intermediate value because that will hardly make any difference because here our filtering criteria is 7 meters so what we have basically done is anything less than 7 meters will be unacceptable and anything above that will have a green color coating so let's press ok and then see if it changes something or not yeah so as per this definition every node is having a sufficient residual head right right so we completed head now we move on to velocity so velocity you all know that uh, it should be in a certain range and for Indian context this is what the ranges look like so in a nutshell we can say that if the velocity is in anywhere from 0.6 meter per second to 1.6 meter per second we can make it acceptable but for the purpose of this experiment we will keep our uh, values from 0.5 to 2 meters right so let's check the velocity in the entire network and to do that we will again go to the map in the browser section and this time we will select the links and on the links we will select velocity so we can see that uh, velocities are there and most of the places the velocities are very less So again we try to modify the legend so here we can put a velocity of 0.6 and then the maximum velocity 1.6 okay and then we choose the colors that anything above 6 1.6 is not acceptable and anything below 0.6 is also not acceptable right uh, so I think we have made some mistake yeah I think in the color coding by mistake we have not changed the values after 0.6 and I think that we need to change yeah so it's 0 0.1 after 0.6 so that should be more than 0.6 otherwise right now I think yeah so some of the nodes are having a velocities which are out of the range okay so to change that what we will do is again we will all again play with the pipe dia and many of you may be wondering uh, what is optimization in a water distribution system this is what we know as optimization so we are making the pipe diameter a bit reduced obviously because we have to increase the velocity and then we will see the effect on the network yeah so after running the velocities of certain pipes have been changed now we can change the diameter of this pipe and let's see if there is any effect on the downstream pipes negative pressures have been developed it means we cannot change the dia here so let it let it be as it is so i think we can keep it as 0.656 only because it is very much close to uh, 0.6 obviously there can be methods to bring it in level but let us just leave it that way only here we can change the dia to 50 both have been changed and then we try to run it the run is successful and the velocities have came in range right now one more thing that uh, we have not added till now and let's add it for now 
we are discussed about the kind of pipe that we are going to use and that is HDPE. So let's check what is the value of roughness coefficient in this entire network. And if it is not as per HDPE, we will change it to HDPE. The C value for HDPE is 140. So let's see what are the values there and let's change it. So we have selected the entire network and then for pipes we are going to replace the roughness with 140 okay and then we run the entire network again right so velocities in uh, many cases have increased a bit now that we have completed this design let us see the table the data so the junctions data looks like this and these are the corresponding heads and pressure we can also find the new things uh, by just right clicking on this icon you can view this either by this short icon or by going to the report section and then we will see the reports for the pipes the velocity the flow we can obviously add the additional elements by right clicking right so the right so the data looks perfect so now we will try to export all these datas and the network okay i will be sharing all this data the raw data that we have used for designing this network and the completed epanet files as well as the reports you can download it from the link in the description of this video how to generate the reports and all let's just learn about that first close it and then we go to export and then we will try to export this map as an dxf file okay you can choose your desired location and then save it we will try to save the report and then for that we go to report and then full and then we choose the desired location and then save it as report that uh, you will be so this is the file that you will be getting in the description uh, so we so you can see that by default there is no program in my system that can open the report so i will try to open it with ms word and for that i click on this and then i will choose open with and then we can go to microsoft word right so this has opened and this is how the report looks you can use it for any official purpose i think I'm very much clear about this tutorial today. So let's call it a wrap. You can download this report also. I'm just saving it as a PDF. So thanks for watching and have a very nice day.